All right, with the new 2024 Mustang, there was a lot of talk about the lack of analog gauges in front of the driver. In front of me right now, I literally have two black screens when the car is turned off, but obviously it is a totally different experience when the car is on. In this video, I wanna go over all of the infotainment, the complete guide, of everything that goes on in the center screen, which is a touch screen, and then everything that goes on with the center or with the uh, gauge cluster behind the steering wheel, which is just a regular screen, but everything's interactive. Ford worked with video game designers literally to get this to essentially look like a video game in front of you, and it's awesome. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start the car. This particular model is a 2024 Mustang Dark Horse Premium, uh, but the infotainment has a couple different features that may be turned on or turned off depending on how your vehicle is equipped. Uh, but essentially, it's all the same. Whether you have the base model or the premium, the main difference, with the infotainment at least, is the bezel. Premium cars have that magnesium bezel, which is one piece all the way across, and the base cars have two separate screens uh, but they essentially perform the same function. It's literally just aesthetic. So uh, personally, base model does the trick. Uh, the other features uh, with the premium are what you would wanna get the premium for. First off, let's pop it in quiet mode so we're not disrupting the video too much. But here's the home screen. So you have the normal gauge layout on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you have uh, your, ascent, your basic infotainment. Um, just, I believe this is SYNC 4, uh, but just like all the past SYNC systems, everything from your radio to your climate control to uh, navigation, uh, CarPlay or Android Auto, uh, the settings, my color, which you can choose the color of the interior of your car, things like that all are centered out of this uh, center screen. So with the home screen, you have your navigation on the left-hand side, audio off currently. Uh, my iPhone, which is wirelessly connected to Apple CarPlay, which is pretty cool. You don't need to plug in anymore. And the uh, wireless charger is actually pretty darn good. It does get the phone a little hot in these new Mustangs, but I also have a Bronco Sport. And I can tell you right now, the charger in that vehicle, which is only a 2021, just in three years, they've come a long way with the wireless chargers, which is great. You know, settings in the top right hand side, uh, features, vehicle features uh, in the middle, and then apps on the bottom right. So kicking things off, we'll do navigation first. So you can see, uh, enable advanced navigation features. Learning your driving habits, uh, deliver map updates. Sure, we'll go with that. Not now. So you can see here, it is a pretty basic system to use. Um, this vehicle is equipped with navigation. If yours is not, the best part is, if it isn't, it's not a big deal. You have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Most people use Waze anyways, and it obviously picked up uh, my phone right off the bat <laughs> just now because I got a notification come through. Go ahead and silence notifications real quick. See the whole United States there, where we're located in South Georgia. Um, but it's just like any other navigation system. You have your recent history here or your favorites here. You have a menu in the left-hand side. It is a lot more intuitive than the past uh, sync systems in my opinion, uh, but even having navigation factory with the car, I still shy towards using the apps on my phone like Waze so I can get notifications of police and things like that. Um, but uh, you know, avoid certain things on your route. You can avoid to tolls or <clears throat> even get weather along the way um, if you're on a long road trip and want to take that into account. So back to the home screen. One thing if you haven't noticed already is the home button is constant, that top toolbar, as well as the bottom climate control. I've seen other infotainment systems out there that aren't as intuitive, specifically with that climate control. One thing I always like having that it's not part of the touch screen in many vehicles that I drive uh, is the volume control, which Ford did keep a analog volume button, which is awesome. Um, very easy, very intuitive. You don't need to even really think about it when you're turning the volume up and down versus some other vehicles. I know like BMW has the gesture control, um, some other kind of funky things that uh, maybe not as intuitive or take a little bit more getting used to. 
Uh, can't say the same for climate control, but that's okay because it is full time along the bottom here. They really did a great job of thinking through, all right, here's the driver's side climate control. Here's the passenger side climate control. You have your heated steering wheel right here. Turn that on or off. Fan speed, auto. Ford a few years ago switched to that three levels of auto, which is kind of cool. So um, even if you have your climate control set, you can turn it on three. and it bumps up the AC a little bit to get to that 72 degrees faster, right? Um, or you can turn it down a little bit. So you don't necessarily need to go out of auto mode and turn the fan speed down. If you're getting a little too cold or too warm too quickly, you can just bump down the auto and it will uh, ease up on the fan speed and get you there a little bit slower, but obviously you're more comfortable. You have max defroster there on the right, uh, your rear defroster as well as the side mirrors if equipped. Um, right there, AC on or off, and then obviously your passenger climate control. You push the center button and it opens up into uh, your climate control panel. Recirculation here, max AC. Uh, dual will obviously pop on if my passenger adjusts the temperature uh, individually from my settings, uh, but obviously if you want it to be equal, um, you can pop dual off and it'll equal out across both sides. But again, it's super intuitive. Um, some will say the infotainment is a little laggy and I have experienced that just a hair. Uh, but the best part about these new vehicles, and I have a couple friends with Mach-E's that have said Ford releases over the air updates, overnight it updates with your Wi-Fi, and you get in the car the next day and that particular issue or bug is gone or even some cool new features. Moving on, we'll jump into settings. Uh, you have the phone list, sync navigation, Sound is grayed out because uh, the audio is currently off. Vehicle, pop into vehicle, 30 minute max idle. So this will beep at me if I'm sitting in a parking lot talking on the phone or something uh, for 30 minutes or more. You can turn that feature on or off. Rear occupant alert is turned off naturally for these Mustangs, but if you have an Explorer or other four-door vehicles from Ford, they'll have that rear occupant alert that pops up uh, when you're leaving the vehicle that you have to hit close. Um, key detection alert, so you can see here, um, sounds the horn when you exit your vehicle with a key. After the last door is closed and your keyless vehicle is in run, indicating your vehicle is still on. So if you're uh, like me, <laughs> hopping out of your car to take pictures and your key is in your pocket, um, you would turn this off so the, the, so the horn doesn't honk at you um, if you're in a public space trying to snap a picture of your car while the car is still running. Um, you have rev match downshift. Um, this is a pretty cool feature that they added, I believe, in 2019 <clears throat> on the uh, S550 GTs, as well as uh, even, believe in the, even the GT350s, the bullets have it. Um, so essentially, it rev matches for you. When you're going into a corner on track and you're braking, the idea is to heel toe downshift to get the car into the gear you want as you go into that corner around track. Um, heel toe downshifting is an art. It takes a lot of practice. I am most certainly not perfect at it. I've tried many years to kind of nail down that feature. Uh, but if you're not interested in learning how to do it, a rev match downshift will do it just for you. Um, I believe it probably has a sensor or something that knows what gear you're going in as you downshift in the transmission. Um, and you ease on the brake like you normally would with your right foot, pop it down from fourth and the third or whatever gear you're downshifting into, and it'll blip the throttle for you in order to get in that gear. Pretty cool feature. Um, quiet start, this is a feature that they've had around since, they, since they've offered active exhaust on the Mustangs in 2018. I have this turned on and you can set the quiet time. Um, so anytime from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m., the car will start up in quiet mode. This is great because uh, for those of, you, those of you out there that live in neighborhoods or apartment complexes where you're not looking to make any enemies, you can have your car automatically start up in quiet mode, um, just not to wake the neighbors. Moving on, you have the alarm system and ask on exit with the motion sensors. And you'll see when you turn the vehicle off, it does ask uh, what you would like to do with the sensors. Um, windows, remote open. Uh, fun fact about uh, the Mustangs, S550s did this as well as S650s. 
Um, if you are outside of your vehicle, the car is off and you have the key in your hand, if you hold the unlock button for something like 10 seconds, uh, it will roll down the windows for you. Um, it allows you to open the windows remotely to use this feature. Press the unlock on the key fob once and then press and hold the unlock button for at least three seconds. I was close. Um, nice little feature in the summertime if you're, uh, let's say you're eating outside at a restaurant, you see your car you, um, and you know you're going to be walking to your car um, soon and you don't have an automatic transmission car, which means you can't do the remote start. Uh, you have a manual transmission car, but it's super hot outside. You want to let some of that heat escape out of the vehicle. You hit and hold the unlock button on your remote and then the windows go down so that heat can escape. <clears throat> Wipers, uh, the courtesy wipe, it's rain sensing. Um, so, you know, well, provided because it will provide a courtesy wipe a few seconds after the initial wipe has been completed to clear excess wiper fluid from the windshield. Uh, rain sensing, if it does sense rain coming down on uh, the windshield, it'll actually turn the wipers on. And these are all things you can turn on and off. Lighting, um, so you have auto high beam, daytime running lights. The welcome lighting and the auto lamp delay. Auto high beam, self-explanatory, um, has a sensor up uh, above the mirror here that picks up high beam or picks up lights <clears throat> coming down down the road. Um, if there aren't any, it'll turn on the high beams for you during the evening. Um, daytime running lights uh, in these S650s, they have them across the top there. Uh, you can turn those on and off. Welcome lighting. This is a new feature for the S650 Mustangs. I know the Mach-E's have it as well. If you have the key fob in your pocket, I believe this is unique to premium, premium cars specifically. Um, you have the, the key fob in your pocket. You're walking up to the vehicle. You get within, let's say, 15 to 20 feet of the vehicle. Uh, the front daytime running lights and the rear tail lights have a welcome sequence that the car goes through um, as you're approaching the vehicle. Pretty cool. And again, great part about this infotainment. It's a huge screen and you have these little info buttons if you ever have any questions on what exactly you're uh, trying to look at. Um, the locks, <clears throat> you have auto unlock, the miss lock chirp, uh, switch inhibit, audible feedback, and remote unlock all doors. Um, you can actually have remote unlock only the driver's door. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, miss lock chirp. Uh, allows your vehicle to chirp or beep twice if a door, trunk, or lift gate are not closed properly when you lock the vehicle. Um, switch inhibit, what's that? Prevents the vehicle from being unlocked from the inside of the vehicle. Very important, uh, very important. <clears throat> not gonna lie, I've done that before in the older S197 cars. It's not fun to grab a clothes hanger and try to get the car, if it's sitting there idling in your driveway <laughs> and you accidentally locked your keys in the car, um, having that feature there on these newer cars is definitely uh, awesome. Um, vehicle settings, oil life. Right now I'm at 86% oil life at 929 miles. I'm getting ready to probably do my oil change here around 1,000 miles. Um, but uh, press and hold that to reset after you've changed your oil. Um, moving on, connectivity. That's all about Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, wireless apps, all that good stuff. Uh, vehicle hotspot. Um, some of the more recent S550s, I want to say 19 and 20 on, had this if your vehicle was equipped with it. Um, you can uh, actually sign up for a wireless plan. If you do a lot of work in your car, maybe that's helpful. Personally, I don't use it. Um, I have my cell phone for a hotspot, but uh, for those that are interested, it's there. Uh, mobile apps. You can do Android apps via USB. Um, since I use CarPlay and I'm an Apple uh, user, I don't use these as much, but I know they're available for Android users. Uh, software updates, automatic updates, and they can push it through there. Um, some people have mixed feelings on Ford being connected to this stuff, but if you're working out glitches and things like that, it's definitely gonna be helpful, especially if, if you are one of those people that are having issues with the infotainment. So go back, go all the way back over, clock, self-explanatory, 24 hour mode, automatically update the time for daylight savings. General, um, English, Fahrenheit for temperature, miles and miles per gallon. Um, obviously you can switch it over to kilometers if, if you're outside of the US. Uh, speedometer and kilometers per hour, it actually switches it live on the digital dash right there. 
uh, tire and units is in PSI. Um, what else we got? Touch screen beep. So you can turn that off and it doesn't beep after you touch it. I like that feedback audibly knowing that I'm pushing a button and whether or not I'm seeing it do something and it tells me whether or not uh, the, the system's lagging. So I like to keep that on and it's not really very loud of a beep. Software licenses, send feedback, reset. <clears throat> Anytime I sell a vehicle, I always like to make sure I reset the sync across the board. That way it drops all of my uh, saved addresses and phones that have been connected and contacts and things like that. Um, instrument cluster, you can choose your screens. We will, you could do this here and you could also do it uh, in my mode or the Mustang screen. So we're gonna go back and do it there. The center display. <clears throat> you can do a calm screen, which is simply the date and time. Tap it again and it goes away. You can adjust the brightness, uh, but it also adjusts the brightness based off of the light that it's picking up outside the vehicle and inside the vehicle. Oops. Ford Assistant. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't used this yet. Uh, I, it's just probably like any other assistant. You have a wake word. Um, wake word is on. You can say, okay, Ford, to initiate voice requests. I want to say this is a, a much more mature version of what you would see in the past voice assistant with sync systems, um, like call so-and-so or uh, play so-and-so on the radio or things like that. Um, but I will tell you, uh, I haven't used this basically since you can hook up your phone for Apple CarPlay. I have Siri on my phone. I'm much more familiar with that voice assistant. Now that everything's been integrated, um, it does make using Siri a lot easier. I can send text messages and things like that while I'm driving. But I know back when I had a 2011 GT, when we were in the first couple generations of Sync and that voice assistant was there for Bluetooth calling and things like that, I used it a lot more often. If you've used Ford Assistant, comment below and let me know uh, how it works for you. Maybe I'll turn it on and give it a shot. Amazon Alexa, similar deal. You can listen for the wake word. Uh, Ford Streaming, you can try out Amazon Music and things like that. It even gives you ideas for things to try. Alexa's talents, entertainment, communication, weather, tells you what the weather is around you. Um, if you do have an Amazon Alexa at home, um, you know, obviously, uh, everything kind of transfers over once you connect your account to the car. 911 Assist, very simple. They've had this on Fords for a long time. If you get in an accident, it'll automatically call 911 for you if the airbags deploy or if it senses you've been in an accident. Valet mode, um, enabling valet mode will lock the system using a four digit pin selected by the user. The same pin must be entered again to disable valet mode and unlock the system. Do you wish to continue? Very, very simple. I believe it limits the RPM and the speed the vehicle can actually go. Um, if you pay this much money for, for a Mustang these days, whether it's an EcoBoost Premium all the way up to a Dark Horse, these cars aren't cheap anymore. So take care of them. If you are in a situation where you have a valet parking your car, take the two seconds and use this feature because it could save you from, you know, having, your, having the valet take your car for a joy ride. And if not, you may not need to use this if you have a dash cam and you don't need to worry about it regardless. So going back to the home screen, you have the audio. Um, I don't wanna get flagged for anything on YouTube, but uh, right now it's connected to CarPlay through my iPhone and it's playing uh, Matt Bianca right now, but you can switch the sources. Uh, it takes me to the iPhone right there. You can switch the sources on the left-hand side, AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth audio or Apple CarPlay, depending on uh, how your car is connected to the vehicle. <clears throat> and Amazon Alexa, I, like I said, Amazon Music, things like that. Um, pretty cool feature there. But ex essentially what, what you'd expect. One thing I will note, the B&O sound system in this thing with the sub in the trunk is freaking awesome. Um, I had the Shaker Pro in my 2018 GT before they switched to B&O in 19. And uh, the Shaker Pro was good. This is better. They did a great job with this system. And for those of you that may not know, I'm a little bit of an audiophile. I, I love high quality audio systems. Call me crazy. I don't have a sound bar in my living room. I have 
an old school receiver and 5.1 surround sound system and absolutely uh, love that old school analog high quality sound. So uh, it's hard to find good sound systems in cars these days. The mids and highs really do tend to sound a little bit more tinny and I listen to a lot of electronic music. Um, so that only makes the highs a little bit worse for the vocals, but uh, they did a really good job with the system. Uh, moving over to Apple CarPlay, uh, I don't have an Android phone, so I can't really show you Android Auto, but obviously it's just like Android Auto pretty much in any other, um, any other setup, uh, but it is pretty cool. Uh, you can see the responsiveness is pretty darn good. I do run into issues sometimes if I'm on the phone and running navigation and I go to try to switch exhaust modes, that's when everything glitches up. I really haven't experienced any other glitches outside of that. Um, but uh, if you've experienced glitches, comment below and let me know if you, uh, what situation you've experienced them in and uh, I'll see if I can replicate them and we'll diagnose from there. Uh, but by the time we diagnose it, Ford will probably have an update out there for you. But one thing that was really cool, obviously this is widescreen. I don't know if it's 16 by nine, it looks a little bit wider than that. Uh, but you do have the option in the top left hand corner to tap those arrows and make this sucker full screen which is really, really cool. But uh, if you are on uh, navigation, obviously that makes it awesome um, when it comes to having all the details up on the screen right there for you. But again, I'm the kind of person that enjoys having a wider screen so I can see more things, I can multitask. Obviously we have, um, let's say in this particular instance, we have navigation and navigation, right? I don't need two different types of navigation going simultaneously. There's no reason for that. But what I do like is having the music on the right-hand side and the nav on the other. Um, you also have uh, your phone, so uh, you can have, it, it'll have navigation there and whoever you're talking to on the phone. Just keep in mind that uh, whatever's on the right hand side is not going to be Apple CarPlay. That's your Sync 4 on the right hand side. But you can even switch it to sw between sw Trip 1 and Trip 2, which is pretty cool. Trip 2, wow, look at that. I put 901 miles on the car since I bought it and 35 hours behind the wheel. Pretty cool. Um, and then obviously uh, instant fuel economy along the bottom here and your average at the top. Admittedly, uh, not the best average, but uh, I bought this car to have fun, right? That about wraps things up for the center infotainment screen with the exception of my favorite button. Y'all ready for this? Down here, you have the Mustang button. Obviously, the Mustang button on a Mustang is something you gotta push, right? So here is my Mustang. Uh, everyone in all of the videos, everyone's got to turn the car like that. Again, those Unreal graphics at work. Uh, Ford did an awesome job on the graphics and overall experience of this system. You have track apps, auxiliary gauges, custom mode, my color, and the cluster theme. We will start at the top with track apps. Um, this car has pretty much every track app you can get. Some have these features deleted depending on how they're equipped. Some have all of them like this. So you have the acceleration timer, the brake performance, lap timer, launch settings, and shift indicator. Um, starting with the acceleration timer, you can select your drive type, 0 to 30, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, eighth mile or quarter, with automatic drag race lights, track race lights, and the start button. Uh, and then over here we have the brake performance. 60 to zero or 100, 100 to zero. If you guys have tried any of these track modes on your S650 or even S550 Mustang, post up your times below. I'm curious. Uh, I haven't really messed with it too much on the S650 yet, uh, but I'm excited to uh, hear what you guys have done. Uh, lap timer. Uh, this uh, is pretty cool. Track one, track two, track three. You can set up different tracks. You can even rename them. Um, and hit the start button and as you cross, it's not exactly perfect, but as you go around a road course, around a track, every time you hit the, uh, hit the line um, to start your, ne start your next lap, you tap the OK button and it starts a new lap. Um, again, not exact, but it gives you a ballpark that's right there in your car, in your peripherals as you're carving your next corner on lap two. Um, launch settings, I have mine set to 3500 RPM. 
Um, it being on street tires and a stick car, you really can't <laughs> punch it too hard. Uh, but the cool part is when you do launch control enabled, you actually get a little rocket ship on, on the tack on the left-hand side. And um, let's see if I can do this real quick. And when you do it, it turns green, like it's ready to roll. Um, pretty cool stuff. And the shift indicator. Um, I ring this thing out because that's what I bought it for. Uh, obviously, all the proper maintenance and things like that. But when I'm at autocross and uh, I need to know where I'm at and having the shift indicator on the tack uh, definitely is very helpful. So um, with the red line being around 7,500 RPM um, and this thing revving up as quickly as it does, uh, I have my shift point set to 7,000 uh, with light mode and tachometer. So it creeps up um, in line with the tack versus track. Track uh, works out from the center and uh, I believe drag mode is uh, what all of them like together. And that's all on the left-hand side. Drift brake, you've heard everybody talk about this. Ford, Ford, the Ford team worked with Vaughn Gittin Jr. in developing the drift brake, the first ever drift brake on the new Mustang. Really, really cool. If your car has this brake and is a performance package, those go hand in hand. Um, cars that have the Brembo brake upgrade but do not have the performance package don't have the drift brake. Even though you have the electronic parking brake and the little uh, trigger here in the center console, uh, you don't have the drift brake. You gotta have this handle and the performance package or it's standard across all dark horses. Uh, but EcoBoost performance package and D GT performance package have the optional drift brake. If you are looking for a video on how exactly to use the drift brake, I've already worn down about half of my new tires in the rear but i'd be happy to put together a video and show you guys exactly how to do it i'm absolutely no extra expert but i love having fun so let me know in the comments um, line lock is just like they rolled out in 2015 um, obviously just with some cooler graphics but essentially line lock is uh, something you would use at the drag strip uh, to do a burnout and heat up the rear tires in order to get better grip off of the line at the drag strip now if you are interested in looking for a step-by-step -step on how to use the line lock on your new 2024 Mustang, comment below and let me know. I'm happy to do tutorials on all this stuff. I love helping you all out. And uh, frankly, it's fun for me too. Uh, launch control, I already showed you guys how that works. And the rev match downshift, like I mentioned earlier, you can turn off the rev match downshift. If you are an old school guy and frankly like to heel toe yourself, totally fine just turn that sucker off and you'll be able to do it just like the old school on the right hand side here you have quiet mode normal sport and track back to quiet um and the auxiliary gauges this is cool so when i was autocrossing uh the car it's really cool to see these gauges out of your peripheral especially at the end of your run, you're able to get immediate results on uh, not only what's going on in the center here, but also on the right uh, and glance over to see before you even look at your time, you can see your G's and kind of know like, oh, wow, OK, that one had some good grip. Uh, hopefully, if I didn't screw up here and there around the track, uh, I, you know, I got a better time. So you have lateral G left and right brake top and uh, at the top and acceleration at the bottom. I, I have it set up for these oil pressure top left, uh, coolant temp bottom right, battery voltage, and uh, I believe that's, yeah, um, air fuel. Uh, you also have the option to switch them out to whatever you'd like, battery voltage, engine oil temperature, accelerometer, air fuel, axle oil temperature, cylinder head. Um, I actually probably want to put this on axle down here and engine oil pressures over there inlet air don't care about that not on an na car at least um we're gonna do cylinder head 
and hit the same button again and boom you're there uh pretty cool stuff you can have it set to three large gauges or one and four um, i like the accelerometer in the center because frankly that's uh giving me the the most information i need uh back here custom mode if you guys have had a mustang in recent years you know that they have my mode uh, it's the same concept here in the new S650 Mustang, except they call it a custom mode with different profiles. My mode would imply there's only one, but you could have multiple profiles. Let's say if multiple people own this car, like a husband and wife, uh, and they, they both enjoy driving with different settings, uh, you can have different profiles. Um, so mine is set up. I have profile one and you can have up to six profiles along the top here with little ponies super cool uh, my base drive mode is in normal you can choose between normal sport track drag or slippery uh, the adaptive dampers stick in normal but if you're in sport you obviously have the dampers in sport or track the dampers are in track steering feel normal sport and comfort um if you're looking for my thoughts on the steering some people have talked about with that with these new s650 mustangs check out my other video covering uh after an autocross with the dark horse and comparing it against my old gt350 and the mach ones um, steering there trash control i'm not crazy i keep it on i'll turn it off when i want to turn it off but i don't like it off full time just in case something happens um you also have uh, active exhaust. You can choose which mode you want it in. For my profile, I keep it in track mode because I like to have, <laughs> I like to party. <laughs> and uh, instrument cluster, you can also choose which one you want it in for that particular mode, um, independent of the drive mode. So I'm a fan of sport, um, which we'll go through the drive modes in a minute. And that's it. my color i don't know how many colors you can have here a ton probably a couple hundred different combinations uh, but my primary i'm a big fan of the red and blue i'm a patriotic guy i love my country uh, so primary is blue secondary is red um, and you can obviously change that uh, with greens or yellows or oranges for your primary color pink red and red go back to blue and you can see everything kind of changing there and then your secondary color you can see it changing on the gauge cluster here along the bottom it takes a second for it to catch up orange a darker orange back to red this is for the display so you see this happening across the screen here but ambient lighting is the same thing um, except it's just one color and you can change the brightness uh, ambient lighting is the same in uh, in these s650s as it was in the s550 ca uh, cars um, you only have one choice though I changed it to blue to kind of match the vapor blue of the outside of the car and you can change the brightness as well and cluster theme so this you have the option to match the drive mode i like the drive mode i like the cluster to change with the drive mode because that's a quick visual indication of what drive mode i'm in <clears throat> but you can also have it be full-time on normal full-time on sport you can see everything kind of changing there in the center full-time on track which is the tack across the top um, much larger kind of uh, gives you uh, an easier indication of where you are on the tack uh, out of your peripherals when you're on track. You have calm, which is simply uh, a tachometer and speed um, in the center there. And one of my favorites, I know you Gen Xers out there would love this. I'm a personal Fox Body fan myself. The 87293 Fox Body Cluster. Uh, a lot of people have talked about this. I think it's really cool that Ford is paying homage to the Fox body, um, knowing that you don't forget your history, you don't forget your roots because that's what makes you who you are. And if it weren't for the Fox body or even the second generation uh, 74 to 78 Mustang, 
we would not be here with the Mustang that I'm sitting in today. So uh, one thing that's really cool about the Fox body mode is that you can switch the headlights on. It'll actually switch the, the gauge cluster for Fox body mode only uh, to that green hue uh, from the backlit uh, gauge cluster of the actual Fox body Mustangs. The numbers actually turn green. It's pretty cool. Um, but all the same features are there. It's just incorporated into kind of a cool Fox body UI. So let's look at drive modes real quick. Um, on the center part of the steering wheel, you have your controls on the left and the controls on the right. On the left hand side, you have your cruise control, um, adaptive cruise control options, set plus, set minus, uh, resume or exit cruise control. You also have your uh, lane keeping system and modes that are in silver up and down. On the right hand side, you have your voice activation. If you hold this, you'll be able to activate Siri. If you push it, it activates the Ford Assistant. The steering modes up and down on volume, and then uh, these actually control what's going on in the center cluster here. Um, and obviously, OK. And then uh, previous and next in terms of your song selection. So, uh, for the different drive modes. Right, ma right now I am in normal mode. Um, I have the gauge detail up in the center cluster. Uh, I also have, can have trip one, fuel economy, tire pressure, and all of that good stuff. Don't mind my tire pressures. I do not have sensors in these wheels, so that's freaking out in terms of <laughs> the pressures that are sitting there. Um, so going up to, we'll go down first. Normal to sport. I thought it was interesting. They used to have the Sport Plus and the S550s. Now they're just calling it Sport Mode. Um, you can see how the gauge cluster changes. It looks a little bit like a fighter jet. Very, very cool interior design. Um, you have the same center cluster with the gauge details, um, depending on what you want to display. I like to have all the numbers in front of me, just so I have an idea of what the car is doing, especially if I'm throwing it around and hooning it a little bit. Um, on the bottom there, you can see that it is in sport mode for the dampers, it's in sport mode for the steering, it's in sport mode for the driving mode, and it's in sport mode for the exhaust mode. So those little icons tell you what the car, what mode the car is in. You can see my comments earlier about wanting to match the drive mode in terms of the way the gauge cluster is, because those little icons are just that, little icons, but the way the gauges are layout, laid out is a great uh, way to see which drive mode you're in. <clears throat> going on, going down to track mode. All right, uh, you have the tachometer across the top. Uh, you have your tire pressures on the right hand side here um, with little warning indicators. If your cylinder head temp gets too hot or your differential temperature gets too hot, you have speed limit, the actual speed you're going. Um, and then what's pretty cool is they actually switch your gas gauge to a percentage. Um, it sounds like it's, you know, something that really doesn't, uh, what's the right way to put this, really doesn't matter. Uh, but for someone, for someone like me who tracks their vehicle or uh, drives very aggressively, but then goes on a long road trip, it totally throws off your miles to empty. Um, so having the percentage there kind of throws out that problem and you can quickly glance and look, obviously you have the gas gauge there, but you can quickly glance and look, okay, I have 40% fuel left. Um, I know where I'm at. And those little icons move up here. You can see it's in track mode for the dampers, uh, sport mode for the steering and track mode for the exhaust. Um, moving on, drag strip mode. We all know what drag strip mode, it's smoking tires because that's what you do before you line up for a run of the drag strip. Same tack across the top, uh, pretty much same across the board, but the dampers themselves are in a track mode. Um, moving on. Slippery, just what it sounds like for wet or slippery driving conditions. Uh, turns it over to quiet mode, puts a pillow in between your foot and the pedal itself. Um, Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, I used it quite a bit when I lived up further north in my 2015 GT and 2018 GT um, that uh, when you're driving in the snow and things like that, help quite a bit. Your custom mode, this is where 
uh, we set up earlier the profile number one profile so you can see right now it is in normal driving mode you can see that with the damper you can see it's in normal driving or normal steering which is totally fine it's what I wanted uh, you can tell it's custom profile one through the icon there but more importantly the track exhaust which is what I selected for that mode and the sport gauge cluster uh, which is I just like looking at it so um, pretty darn cool if you are looking for a complete overview of all the driving modes on the 2024 Mustang Dark Horse um, I am happy to go over all the details as you switch to driving mode what exactly is happening to the car and uh, specifically um, how what situations you want to be using those driving modes in so comment below and let me know if that's something you want to see uh, but that pretty much wraps up everything in terms of the infotainment and the gauge cluster all that good stuff down here I did want to mention you also have a favorite button down on the physical buttons on the bottom here that actually you can set I have set it to launch control to turn that on and off but you actually have a couple different options of how you can set up that that particular button um, when you push that button for the first time it will actually uh, show up on the screen that hey you have a couple different options of what you can select uh, for this favorite button right here um, otherwise it's in the settings and you can change it there um, you also have max defroster there trash control hazards all that good stuff uh, but that about wraps things up. If you have any more questions, please comment below. This is a very long video, very in-depth, but frankly, I wanted to show you guys all of the different capabilities of the new Mustang infotainment system and uh, frankly, how cool it is to have this kind of experience wrapped around you as a driver when you're going down the road in your, in your Mustang. So. Uh, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, um, and that notification bell. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. Uh, this is something a little bit new for me, but frankly, uh, I do enjoy doing it. I do uh, enjoy helping teach other Mustang owners and, and bring new people into the fold. If this is your first Mustang, comment below. I want to hear about that too. Uh, aside from that, it's Chris signing out.